On this month's show, we'll be talking about bending and vibrato. We'll show you how Albert Collins got his tone. We're going to give you the latest guitar world news. And we'll tell you how to enter the draw for our £1,200 hand-wired valve combo giveaway. That's a great example of bending, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? absolutely. So you do the first bend and it's nice and slow, and then when you come down, you go to the G string and Ooh, bend, that, <laughs> bend that down afterwards. And that I love that effect on that. I think that's what's going on. And you can but, do it on this string as well, okay? Yeah. It's a trick. It's a good trick. Is it a trick? Oh, it's a lovely trick. It's a trick. And you sounded like you were doing pinch harmonics with flesh as well as the pick to try and bring out the harmonics oh, in it. Maybe. You're not doing a full pinched harmonic, it's just squeaking the sound a bit more. Yeah, I see what you mean. Smart. That's really good. So that, the tone's lovely. And of course it was done on a strap, was it? It was a gold top Gibson Les Paul oh, with the P90s oh, right. straight into the desk. Wow. He, he said it needed a bit of more meat to it, so they reamped it and run that with the DI right, sound yeah, right. both at the same time. Oh, well, there's so another bit, isn't there? Yeah. Right, yeah. So. yeah. Do you do the next bit? Really? <laughs> And he goes up to a four. That's sort of almost a limit, isn't it? A fourth bend. That last bit's crazy, isn't it? It is. It's the first time I thought, oh my god, that's that's a tremendous use of uh, bends. But interesting, you didn't... Right bend, I want to... Yeah. There's another type of bend. Where you go to get the top E, yeah. but you hit the strings above it yeah. whilst you're bending that, just to make, uh, I don't know, I think they call them a train wreck bend, and Stevie <laughs> Ray Vaughan did it. Uh, Hendrix did it, but Stevie did it all the time. Right, Steve does that. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, he does, yeah. Do you? No, it won't go! There's another one I do a lot. It's making us look stupid, eh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's very nice. I've mm. never, never done that. Sounds what do you like, love on that? That sounds like you're banging the tremolo on. Sliding it whilst it's bent. Yeah. Johan Segerborn, I don't know if that's how you say it, sorry if it's not. Just mm. put the final nail in the Tonewood coffin. On this video, what he's done is he's taken the same bolt-on neck, same pickup position, same bridge and everything, and then just bolted them all to a, a lump of wood. That's it, yeah. And then done three different pieces of wood <laughs> to mm. see what the difference is. And it, and, and it makes a difference. Oh, it's there and sure it's does. huge. Because I've had quite a number of strats over the years. <laughs> and also a few tallies, and uh, actually swap necks and bodies and things, using the same strings, by the way, because that's always the argument, you've got new strings, it's gonna, same mm. strings. Mm. Yeah. Swap necks, you've got a different sound. It's even the same piece of wood from the same tree, it sounds it sound yeah. completely different. Well, same weight, same year. That's a great point, yeah. because there was another guy on the internet who said that tone wood bollocks on electric guitars, but wood makes a difference to the tone. Mm. And his argument was that the wood around the neck joint is particularly fluffy, mm. or mm. a different grain, where that bolts together, mm. it doesn't matter if it's rosewood or 
maple that you've made the body out of, you know, or alder or ash or mahogany. Well, uh, I think they're really <laughs> struggling. There was a picture of a snapped headstock mm. on the advert for the uh, new yeah. guitar. Yeah. And then the other thing is people have been sending them back because they've been coming and the neck's been just falling out because the glue wasn't right oh, on Jesus. a new, brand new guitar. Yeah. And they've been sending people back guitars and guitars with all sorts of massive issues. I think they have been going through a cheapening process for some time because they've introduced cheaper models to make because they're so expensive weren't they yeah and you know you're looking for a Les Paul and you think I just can't afford one and then they brought out all these new models and they that were you know hundreds cheaper and yeah. they look great and well obviously <laughs> yeah you know what yeah. happened to the robo guitar as well oh yeah robo tuners mm. yeah. there's a machine had to do the thing on their own and everything <laughs> yeah well mm. Mike had one of them delivered didn't he because he had this thing going Mike Gibson. Peters yeah and uh, it was amazing. Well, th we thought it was amazing. Did could you? S <laughs> ah! Could you? S could you see him? Could you, could you see them that. going? Zzz? Yeah, yeah. You could hear them, see seen, them, yeah. and then it's got this little thing on here, and you can tune, do different tunings if you want. Uh, it affects the bloody weight. Yeah, that's the what balance I mean, of the guitar is stuffed. Does it go like that? Yeah, like that. The country guys do it the other way round. That one bends. Oh yeah. So it's like... Oh, that? Yeah. Oh, my. What about this? That's one of mine. You that? Yeah, is that, that one is one yours, yours. yeah. Oh, sorry, Mark. No, 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 no. I didn't realise. No, no, no. Music, I... you don't own it. Where you try and sound like you've got a slide on and you haven't, just by bending it. Um, the great thing is, you, say you're playing with A, just play it, whatever you're playing in... Um, <laughs> Slide off. We're trying to be bloody serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, we're... Um, just just no. hitting with it. So, uh, anyway, Scandal. yeah, you play in A flat, but bend it up. <laughs> right, 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 right. Rather and than... The more notes you can do mm. at one time, the better, but... I can't do one at a time, unfortunately, but I'll have a go. Overshoots, well, I call overshoots. Yeah. Uh, where you bend too far. If you get that wrong, it sounds like you sound an idiot, mm. you know. But if you get it right, it sounds really good. Not quite making it, it's normally sort of all yeah. right, yeah. yeah, isn't it? You're just under the note where you're supposed to be, depending on your mood. If you're slightly depressed, you might be slightly under the note, you know. <laughs> but if you're on form, you'll be bang on it. Mm. Um, but if you're too enthusiastic, you're going to overshoot a little bit. Yes. You know, depending on how excited you are or <laughs> what, what, yeah. how much coffee you've had. But um, there are some records where they overshoot bend is absolutely yeah. brilliant. Bends with vibrato. Vibrate. Yeah. You know about that, you do them all the time. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> it's almost um, automatic, you have your own rate, your own, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, your own comfortable vibrato rate. Do you do different vibrato rates? I don't know. I try. I try. What do you mean? Oh. Yeah. Don't put that in. <laughs> You're going to be Another crying. one is, 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 um, is doing a vibrato and stopping it and then starting it again. Yes. Right. Yeah. You do all the time. We just, we just don't quantify it. That's why we're doing the program. I try and do occasionally. Yeah. Pretend that I'm from Los Angeles, and, <laughs> and then I'm actually six foot two. Yeah. And I, I I can wear spandex and get away with it. And and I do a very very slow vibrato. Right. Okay. Um. It's sort of that rate. Nothing's a problem, you know. Right, okay. But I'm faking it because yeah. I'm only five foot seven. Yeah. Or 
Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll I try and adjust the rate of vibrato. Yeah. Um, when I remember to. I think you're yeah. five nine. No. Oh, and when, uh, but like when I get on stage, the natural thing to do is to do what you naturally do. Yeah. And, and for me, it's stunned rabbit vibrato. <laughs> yeah. And the rabbit in the headlights. Yeah. Like, oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah. Uh, pardon me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, rather like than, a nervy vibrato. Rather than sort of. Yeah. Uh... Or the guitar a second. Oh no. Yeah. Oh, not again, man. Oh. People like Bodyguard and then Robert Cray kind of took from that thing. And, Fast, um, yeah, yeah. The nervy sort of vibrato. Yeah, and I think <laughs> part of it is that the sustain isn't there with their tone. They, they've got to say it quicker yeah. before the note runs out. Right, yeah. <laughs> I can't sleep for the rest of the three <laughs> How can somebody make one note just kill everything? It's just like no, nothing else exists. Mm. The amp has got to be on 10. You know, oh. Oh. you're talking about Silverface. He used a quad verb, right. which is like a twin reverb, but with um, four 12 inch speakers instead of just two. So um, it's the same circuit and everything, but he was playing a Silverface one. So they're a little bit louder again than the normal twin. Him refusing to have them on anything other than 10 on the volume, 10 on the treble and 10 yeah. on the middle. Wow. And then refusing. Uh, zero. Good. Good. Yeah, it's Good. great, isn't it? Doesn't it doesn't yeah. sound like he's got 10 on the treble. 100 foot guitar lead. For every foot of uh, guitar lead, 30 picofarads of capacitance. This is a great example of somebody finding their sound because I've seen so many articles where people have talked about guitar leads, YouTube videos, the shorter the better, everything. Yeah. Albert Collins wouldn't sound like Albert Collins unless he's got a really long guitar lead. Wow. The other interesting thing, when you're really driving an amp, don't be frightened to mess around with the uh, tone controls to extremes because if it's already in overdrive, yeah, that starts to compress and clip signals. Yeah. If you're turning the treble up and, and it's a There's clipping, a ceiling, yes. There's a ceiling anyway, so all mm. you're doing is compressing the treble more. I understand this about guitar leads, because I used to do straight leads. Yeah. And I tried a curly one, and it just got, cut that nasty abrasion off a bit. Most of the time, he was on the in-between position. Uh, when he was really digging in, he'd go all, oh, bridge pickup. Wow. He also had pretty low action because uh, you can hear the fret buzz. He played fairly thin strings but he actually tuned them to an F minor chord. Uh. So the string tension goes up massively. Mm. <laughs> regularly and you're going to bend with a capo <laughs> so you don't have that happening you should put little notches little uh cut with a file little ridges where the strings are going to go how deep do you do those how deep is you your groove just have to. when you put this on the although the pitch of the strings is just the same if you're fretting a note here as without it when you bend it you're only bending from there to there. Yeah. So if I bend this note, I'm only moving my finger that far. My, I'm not even touching the other string yet. Right. 
take that off and I'm I'm having to push the next string out of the way mm. so you have to push it a lot further to get the same bend yeah which really affects the the style of your playing it's, yeah. just, it's everything isn't yeah it? yeah and all the attention is different now and you didn't have a thing in it, man. I mean, Club that didn't have a thing in it. <laughs> didn't have a thing in it. <laughs> didn't have a thing in it. Didn't have a thing in it. <laughs> The other day we were playing a riff. Born under a bad sign. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Born under a bad sign. Um, <laughs> and it's in G, right? It's a cruel. I mean, before, you know, after a little while of me playing that riff, I was like, I, I, I'm bored of the riff now. Yeah. Uh, let's try and mess it up. <laughs> And yeah. then I thought, I can be a super efficient machine now and use one fret if I'm clever. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yeah. So I'm on one fret now. Yeah. Sounds crazy. So you yeah. only need one fret to play guitar? Well, that is actually... <laughs> yeah, you probably do, yeah. I mean, in, in doing that, it, the, then the riff now develops a new attitude. I mean, how far can you actually bend, you know? Well, I was just saying the limit is sort of like a four-ish. It's up to there. <laughs> <laughs> how many did you do? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's a fifth. controlling that you know really you should do your slide playing like that that was just totally uh, yeah <laughs> On next month's show, we'll be talking about picks and fingers. We'll show you how Jimi Hendrix got his tone, and we'll be going to the London Guitar Show. To enter the amp competition, read the description for instructions. Anyway, thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and like.